It's a freezing morning. You start your car, crank up the heat, and wait for that comforting blast of hot air. But instead, it's just warm. Not icy cold, but definitely not enough to thaw your fingers or defrost your windshield. If that sounds familiar, you're not alone. A car heater that only blows warm air is one of the most common and confusing issues drivers face during cold weather. The good news is that understanding why it happens doesn't require a mechanic's certification. To begin, it helps to know that your car's heater isn't a separate system at all. It's part of your engine's cooling system. Here's the simple version of how it works. Coolant, also called antifreeze, circulates through the engine to absorb heat. This hot coolant is then routed through a small radiator-like component called the heater core, which is tucked behind the dashboard. A blower fan pushes air through the heater core, warming that air before it's directed into the cabin through the vents. The thermostat regulates the coolant temperature by controlling when it flows through the radiator, and blend doors, small flaps inside the HVAC box, control how much hot or cold air mixes before it reaches the vents. If any part of this chain fails, if coolant doesn't flow properly, the temperature isn't high enough, or airflow is misdirected, your heater output can drop from hot to merely warm. There are several common reasons why this happens. The first and most frequent culprit is a low coolant level. When there isn't enough coolant in the system, less hot fluid circulates through the heater core. Because the heater core depends on that hot coolant to transfer heat to the air, a low level means the air can only get lukewarm. Coolant levels usually drop because of leaks, often from hoses, the water pump, or the radiator itself. The easiest way to check for this is to look at the coolant reservoir when the engine is completely cold. If the level is below the Mayen line, that's likely your issue. Another common cause is a stuck or failing thermostat. The thermostat's job is to keep the engine, and by extension, the coolant, at an optimal temperature. When it sticks open, coolant flows too freely through the radiator, causing the engine to run cooler than it should. If the coolant never reaches full operating temperature, typically around 190 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit, 88 to 99 degrees Celsius, the heater core never gets hot enough to provide strong heat. In this case, you'll often notice that the temperature gauge stays lower than normal and the heater never gets truly warm. A third possibility is air trapped in the cooling system. Air pockets can prevent coolant from fully flowing through the heater core. Because air doesn't transfer heat the way liquid does, sections of the heater core stay cool, and the air blowing through it won't warm up properly. This problem often happens right after a coolant service or a recent repair, if the system wasn't properly bled to remove trapped air. Sometimes the problem lies with a partially clogged heater core. Over time, rust, scale, or debris can build up inside the heater core's tiny passages, restricting coolant flow. When that happens, the heater core can't absorb and transfer enough heat to the air passing through it. A telltale sign is that one heater hose feels noticeably cooler than the other, which means the coolant isn't circulating evenly through the core. A fifth cause involves the HVAC blend doors or their actuators. These components determine how hot or cold the air will be before it reaches the vents. If a blend door sticks or an actuator motor fails, the system may mix in too much cool air even though the heater core is functioning normally. You might notice that the temperature changes unpredictably, or you could hear clicking sounds from behind the dashboard when adjusting the temperature controls. Finally, problems with the water pump or overall coolant circulation can also cause weak cabin heat. If the water pump isn't pushing coolant effectively through the system, the heater core may not receive enough flow to produce strong heat. This often shows up as the engine overheating at idle but running normally while driving, or the opposite, losing heat at high speeds. Now that you know the likely causes, let's go through a simple, step-by-step -step troubleshooting process that's safe for everyday drivers. Begin with the easiest checks and move toward the more complex ones. Start by checking the coolant level. Use a flashlight and gloves and make sure the engine is completely cold. Locate the coolant reservoir, which is usually a translucent plastic tank, and verify that the coolant is between the Mayen and Max marks. If it's low, top it off with the correct type of coolant for your vehicle. Be very careful. Let the engine cool off completely because the coolant is very hot and under a lot of pressure in the short term. And when you remove the cap from the reservoir, the high pressure can cause the coolant to spray out and burn you, especially since it's extremely hot. 
even after quite some time has passed, 30 minutes to an hour, be very careful and loosen the cap slowly. Keep in mind that if you see that the coolant drops without any reason, you'd better seek a professional mechanic. Next, inspect for leaks. Look under the front of your car for wet spots or puddles, especially near the radiator or hose connections. White residue or crusty buildup around hose fittings is another sign of a leak, as is a sweet smell inside or outside the vehicle which comes from evaporating coolant. If you confirm a leak, stop troubleshooting there and have the issue addressed by a mechanic. Driving with low coolant can cause severe engine damage. Once you've confirmed there are no leaks or low coolant, observe your temperature gauge. Start the car and let it warm up. If the gauge never reaches its normal operating range, the thermostat may be stuck open. If it rises normally but the heater air stays only warm, you might be dealing with a heater core or blend door issue instead. If you're comfortable doing a light hands-on check, you can carefully feel the heater hoses once the engine is warm but turned off. Wear gloves and be cautious. Both hoses should feel hot and roughly the same temperature. If one feels significantly cooler, that's a sign of a clogged or air-locked heater core restricting flow. You can also listen for blend door problems. Adjust the temperature setting from cold to hot and back again while the car is running. If you hear clicking or the air temperature fails to change, a blend door or actuator is likely malfunctioning. And if your heater problem started shortly after coolant service or repair work, ask the shop whether they bled the system properly. Air trapped after refilling is a very common cause of this exact issue. Before doing any hands-on checks, safety should come first. Never open the radiator cap when the engine is hot, as coolant under pressure can spray out and cause serious burns. Avoid working around moving parts because fans and belts can start unexpectedly even with the ignition off. Always wear gloves and eye protection when checking coolant or hoses, and use only the correct coolant type specified in your owner's manual or on the reservoir cap. Mixing coolant types can lead to corrosion and clogs in the system. If your troubleshooting points to anything beyond low coolant, it's best to see a professional mechanic. Seek help if you're losing coolant without visible leaks, since that could mean an internal head gasket problem. Likewise, if your engine takes too long to warm up, if the heater only works intermittently, or if you suspect a clogged heater core or blend door issue, a qualified technician can diagnose it accurately. Many of these repairs require specialized equipment or access behind the dashboard that isn't practical for DIYers. Professional shops can perform pressure tests, infrared temperature scans, and flow checks that pinpoint the exact cause quickly, saving you time and guesswork. To prevent heating problems in the future, adopt a few simple maintenance habits. Check your coolant level monthly, especially before winter. Flush the cooling system every two to three years or as your manufacturer recommends. Always use the correct coolant mixture, typically a 50-50 blend of antifreeze and distilled water, and run your heater occasionally even in warm weather to keep valves and blend doors from sticking. Drivers often ask a few related questions about heater performance. For instance, if your heater works while idling but turns cool when driving, that's usually a sign of low coolant or air in the system. When the car accelerates, coolant may shift away from the heater core. If you wonder whether a bad water pump can affect cabin heat, the answer is yes. A weak pump can reduce coolant flow and cause the heater to lose effectiveness at idle or highway speeds. And if your car blows cold air at startup but warms up later, that's normal since engines need to reach operating temperature before providing full heat. However, if it never gets truly hot, suspect a thermostat or coolant circulation problem. A car heater that only blows warm air isn't just an inconvenience. It's often an early warning that your cooling system needs attention. By understanding the basics, checking the simple things first, and knowing when to call in a professional, you can stay comfortable in the cabin while also preventing more serious and expensive engine problems down the road.